coming. Check out that steaming sizzling going on there, the sticky sauce, the glossy chicken. And now for this one, my friends, I'm gonna recommend something I never usually do. We're gonna use chicken breast. I am a legs and thighs girl. I'm a legs and thighs girl. Legs and thighs only, please. But I have the most amazing technique for getting super tender, juicy chicken breast. Let's do it, my friends. Let's make hoisin chicken stir fry. So I have the perfect recipe for the marinade, for the sauce, but first of all, we need to deal with the chicken. So I am using chicken breast, as I said, and the problem with chicken breast starts with the fact that it is a very lean meat. So there's not much fat giving you any kind of juiciness. So if you have a look at your piece of chicken here, you'll notice it does actually have a grain, similar to a grain that steak has. So I'm gonna slice across the chicken grain this way, and this is gonna give you a more tender result when you bite through into each piece. Now, Keeping your slices beautifully thin here also helps to keep your chicken very tender in the stir fry. So we're not done yet with the tenderizing of the chicken. The marinade is also really important. Start off with your soy sauce, dark soy sauce, Chinese Shaoxing wine. That one's optional, you can leave it out if you want to. Now we come to the tenderizing. So I'm starting with bicarb soda. Bicarb soda helps with tenderizing, also like encourages the chicken to brown up faster in the pan so it's not sitting there and getting kind of dry and cooked through. Getting cooked through, you want it cooked through because chicken that's not cooked through isn't that great. Okay. The bicarb soda helps to tenderize the chicken and encourages it to brown a lot quicker in the wok so it's not kind of getting all tough and dry. Corn flour is the other little trick here. It kind of gives you a lovely layer of velvety richness to the outside of the chicken, like it tricks your mouth into thinking it's more tender and soft. For the stir fry sauce here, we're going a little bit extra special. So we're not just gonna do like a soy sauce combo, but we're gonna add in some hoisin as well, which gives us a lovely sweetness. Soy sauce, Chinese Shaoxing wine, sugar, a little bit of vinegar. Now it's these small little details that really make a difference. The vinegar gives you a little bit of tang that balances the sweetness in the sauce. A little pinch of ground black pepper and just give that a mix. One other little thing here and you're totally gonna think that I'm being pedantic but trust me all the details make a big difference. So garlic. What I find is that a lot of people will slice the garlic or finely chop the garlic so that it burns really easily in the pan. So what I like to do is do a really rough chop. This is the kind of situation that you're looking for right here. Hello, what are you doing? Oh, I've just made some chicken stir fry. I just thought I'd take you to film And we cooked your steak as well. So you got steak and chicken stir fry here. All right, okay, good day. Bye-bye. Good night. Oh, they're coming, oh, cool. Mother knows not wasting chicken no, stir fry. All right. Or any stir fry. Or any food down there. She's like, I'm there. <laughs> coming. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. Just personal phone calls. All right, so I have all my stir fry things here. Stir fry etiquette. Very important to get your wok super hot. I'm using my Mako, so it's pre seasoned, has a beautiful flavor, lovely patina, which I love. But if you're not using a wok, you can just use a very wide pan. So the thing about the pan or the wok is that you want everything to kind of hit and sear as soon as it touches the heat. Add the oil to your very hot pan, then add in your onion. And the technique here is that every ingredient gets time to kind of get some charriness and also you allow the pan to heat back up again before you add the next ingredient. And now I'm gonna add in the chicken. Spread it out and then let it sit. Do not touch the chicken. I repeat, do not touch the chicken. Let it sear and crisp up and get all kind of brown and lovely on the bottom. Around about three minutes or four. See how you go. I'm curious, in yeah. the recipe ingredients, you put ingredient number one, mako? I did, yes. <laughs> no, honestly though, I seriously, this is like, this wok was revolutionary for me. Things just taste better in the mako, including chicken breast. Now give everything a bit of a stir fry. You can see we're already getting some really lovely color on that chicken and it already looks really lovely and glossy and sticky and yum. Then you can add in the garlic. This is the perfect time for garlic because it's not going to burn, which it would have if you added it in at the beginning. Toss that around, add in your capsicum, give that a bit of time to get a little bit tender. Now for the stir fry sauce. So one more tip here is if you pour the stir fry sauce around the edges of the wok, you're getting the sauce bubbling and sizzling and getting all sticky and sweet straight away. Toss all of that through, now throw in your spring onions, toss all of that through, and this is what you have, my friends, a sticky, glossy, amazingly delicious chicken stir fry. 
And there you go, guys. Some really simple little things you can do to make a chicken stir fry like over the top good. The real test though is what does this chicken breast taste like? Mm, it's game changing. It's literally changed the texture of that chicken breast so much. It just melts in your mouth like a little puffy cloud. A little puffy cloud? Sort of, like a, you know, like a cloud. Like a... <laughs> it's too late in the day to think up really good metaphors, right, Dax? Oh, that was a simile, actually, technically. <laughs> it's delicious. Try it. And tender. And the chicken is cooked through, so winning. <laughs>